Hello, you wonderful people. Today, we're going to continue building our Next.js and Strapi YouTube video summarizer application. And in the previous videos, we already created our top navigation, our landing page with our hero section, our features, and our footer. And in the previous video, we started building out our sign-in page and our sign-up form as well. And we left off taking a look how we could get our form data, pass it to our server action. So let me go ahead and fill it out. Test user, test user at email.com and password test user. When I click sign up, we're going to see that we're able to display our information. So in this video, we're going to continue building out our sign up page and add the logic that's going to allow us to log in via our Strapi backend, where we're going to register our user to our backend and it's going to show up here. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. And if you're brand new, this is based on a blog post that I wrote and recently started updating for the newly released Strapi 5. So all the code snippets you'll be able to find in this blog post and I'll make sure to, the, to link to it in the description below so you have access to all the code snippets. This way you don't have to watch me type everything. So quick refresher, in our previous video, we set up our awesome sign up form, which we created a form action that allows us to get data from our form based on our inputs and the name attribute. And then when we submit the form that gets fired in our action, and the server action runs on the server, but we're able to return our form data using previous state. So if we take a look back up in our signup form, when you saw the console log earlier, that came from our front end using our form state from Next.js. Now that we know that our server action is connected, we're going to work on building out the logic to allow us to create our user in Strapi. But before we do that, we're going to learn about Zod and how we could use it to do server-side Zod validation to make sure that the data that we're passing is what our Strapi endpoint expect. So we're going to start by installing Zod in the root of our Next.js project. Here I am inside the root of my application. I'm going to run yarn add Zod. It's gonna go ahead and install all the necessary dependencies. Once Zod installed back in our auth actions, go ahead and import Zod from Zod. And we're going to create a basic schema that we're going to use for validation. I'm using the code snippet from the blog post, but basically we're going to create a simple schema that's gonna check our username to make sure that it's a string, minimum of three characters, max 20. Then we're gonna have a custom message if it doesn't fit the specified requirements, we will throw this error. We're going to do the same thing for our password and our email. Now that we have our schema, let's go ahead and use it. So navigating to the bottom here, instead of getting the fields the way we did in our previous video, we're actually going to get them inside our save parse method that is going to be included in our schema register object that we created with Zod. This will allow us to validate our fields. We're gonna save it under a const called validated fields and now we're able to use it. Instead of this console log, we're going to say if validated fields are not successful, let's go ahead and return Zod errors that we could use. So we will pass this to our front end from our server action to show what errors that we have. We're also gonna say strappy errors for null. This is something we're gonna use in the near future. And for messages, we're just gonna say missing fields or fail to register. But for our client side, we're going to make sure to show the messages that we receive from our Zod errors. So now that we have our schema, we got our data from our form using form data that get based on the name attribute that we provided in our forms. For instance, here you could see that the name attribute for our input has a value of username and that's how we are getting our data. Once we have our data, we are going to run validate field success automatically done by Zod based on the schema that we identified below. And if this fails, it's going to go ahead and return our previous state and our Zod validation errors. Otherwise, we're just going to return data is okay. So now that we have our updated auth action back in our application, if I try to sign up, 
we're not gonna see any console logs on our front end. So now in our signup form, here in form state, I'm just gonna remove the data attribute so we could see the complete object. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you're gonna have nested items in your return, you could do console log there with depth of null, and that's gonna destructure all your objects so you could see all the values. Now back in our application, if we inspect, make sure and go to console log. If I click sign up, notice we get our object and inside our object, we have our Zod errors, which show our messages. It says, hey, email is required. Please enter your valid email. Password is required. And it shows our error messages that are coming from our auth action defined in our schema Zod object here. And because this failed, it is hitting this return statement saying, hey, go ahead and fix those fields. So now in the front end, if I go ahead and fill out the form, test user at email.com, test user, and click sign up. And we see that is okay because when we hit this if statement, we didn't have any errors. So it continued and return okay. Now that we know that our Zod validation works, let's see how we could add components to our signup form to show our error message is visually. So now in our project, let's navigate to components custom and create a new file called zodeerrors.tsx and let's paste our snippet. And again, you could find all the snippets in the accompanying blog post and you could use this blog post as reference to quickly give yourself a refresher of what we did in this video. And now that we have our Zod error component, let's go ahead back to our signup forms and import it so we could use it. So I'm gonna go ahead under the Shed CN UI components, I'm gonna import our Zod errors and we're going to scroll down and we're going to add them to all of our fields. For the username, under the input, we're gonna paste Zod errors. And again, we have access to the form state, which has an object Zod errors, and we wanna get the username. And if you're wondering where is this form state is coming, if we navigate back to the top, we're getting form state from our form action. And if we take a look at our auth action, we have our Zod errors here that are being returned to our front end. And that's why we have access to them via our form state and be able to pass it to our Zod errors component. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy. We're gonna do the same thing for the email and we're just gonna say email and we're going to do the following for the password here. And we're going to say password, perfect. And now that we have our error component, Back in the front end, if I try submit my form, you're gonna notice that we have our error messages. If I say test user and click sign up, that initial error goes away. And if I add the email and click sign up, notice that every time we add all the appropriate fields, the errors disappear because we're fulfilling the requirements that we had for the test. So now that we know that our validation and checks are working, let's create the logic to authenticate our user with Strapi. Now, I definitely recommend that you take a look through the blog post that you've been using and definitely use it as a resources. This is why I include it in this video, but we're going to authenticate our user with Strapi where we're going to get back a JWT token that we're going to store as a HTTP only cookie to create authenticated requests for our user. So we're going to start by creating services. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code snippet and we're going to talk through it as we work through it and I'll make sure to explain everything that you need. But right now, let's create a new folder inside our data folder called services. And we're going to create a file called auth-services.ts where we could put this logic. So back in my project, I'm going to navigate to our data folder. Instead of actions, we're gonna create a new folder called services. And inside our service folder, we're gonna create a new file called auth slash service dot dot ts and we're going to paste our code snippet so quickly reviewing the snippet we're adding our prop types we're going to have a username password and email going to be strings this is for our registration form and for our login we're just going to have an identifier and a password which both are going to be strings we are going to have a helper function that's gonna get our strappy based URL that we could pass 
in a form. And inside here, we're hitting a Strapi endpoint that will allow you to register your user. If you ever get lost, you could go to Strapi documentation. We have this cool AI feature and you could ask how to register user via API. And it's gonna go ahead and find all the appropriate articles as well as show you basic examples that you could follow, but that's exactly what we're going to do in our code. So in this example, here's the endpoint that we wanna to hit to register. We are going to make a post request. We're gonna provide our user an email and password data. We're going to use Next.js fetch. Here they're using Axios as an example, and that's exactly what we're doing in our code. So if we take a look at our code, we basically have our URL to which we are appending our base URL which is gonna be HTTP localhost 1337 at API auth local register. And we're making a fetch request to which we're gonna pass our user data. And our user data is going to be our username, password, and email. And this is going to be the service that we're going to call when we register. If you scroll to the second one here, this is gonna be login user service, which is going to take in our identifier and password, and we're making that request to a Strapi endpoint that's responsible for login, and we're using fetch to pass our user data, and with that, we're going to get the response. So now that we have our services, let's go ahead and use them in our actions. So inside our auth actions, scroll here to the top, let's go ahead and import our newly created services, and we're going to start with register user service first. Inside register user action, after our schema validation, we're going to go ahead and call our register user service. From that, we're going to have a response data, which may have a JWT token, or it's going to have some errors. So let's go ahead and handle that. We are first gonna check the response for generic errors. If we have errors, we're just gonna say, hey, oops, something went wrong, please try again. Finally, we're going to check if Strapi returns errors, they're gonna live in an error object. If we have response that error, that means that we have Strapi errors. So we're going to go ahead and return them to our front end. And for now, before taking a look how we can set our cookie, we're just gonna console log our response data. If successful, it's going to have our JWT token. So let's check it out. So now here in our front end, I'm going to say test user is gonna be my username, test user at email.com is going to be the email and the password is going to be test user. I'm gonna click sign up and our front end is going to return undefined because if you take a look in our auth action, currently we're not returning anything, but instead we're console logging our response data.jwt token. The reason why you did not see it on the front end, and this is why I wanted to show you, is that this is running on the server, right? This is using our server action, and we specify that by use server. So where are we going to see our JWT token? You guessed it, it's going to be here running in our terminal. So notice that we are receiving a success message, including our JWT token. And if we take a look inside our Strapi application and refresh, you're going to see that we successfully created a user and authenticated with Strapi, which is pretty cool. Now that we know everything works, let's go ahead and add a helpful error message to say if the user either typed the wrong uh, password or email, or they're trying to create an account with a username that it exists. So now let's implement handling our Strapi errors. We're going to create a new component inside our component custom folder called strapierrors.tsx. You could copy this uh, code snippet. So in my project, let's navigate to components, custom, create a new file called strapierrors.tsx. Go ahead and paste that component. It's a simple component, which basically takes in a message, a name and status. Then we're gonna check if we have any messages. If so, we're going to return them to our user and display them. Now that we have our strappy errors back in our signup form, scrolling to the top, let's go ahead and import them. 
And in our form, let's navigate to the bottom where we have our cart footer. And this is where we're going to paste it in and use it. So now whenever our auth action fires, if there's a strappy error that gets returned, we're going to have access to it from our form state and we should see it. So now my front end, if I try to create a user with the same credentials that I have and click sign up, notice that we have a correct message that says, hey, email or username is already taken. And now we're going to take a look how to handle pending state in Next.js with use form status by creating a new component called submit button that's going to have our form state that will allow us to show a loader when something's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code snippet and walk you through it in just a minute, but we're going to create a new file inside our components custom folder called submit button.tsx. So let's go ahead and do so. Back in our custom folder, create a new file called submit button.tsx and let's go ahead and paste it in. Here, what we're doing is we're getting form status, which will give us access to our different pending states. So here in our submit button component, notice we will be able to check the pending state. And if it's loading, we're going to show our loader component that we have here. Now that we have the submit button, let's navigate back to our sign up form. Let's scroll to the top and import it and scrolling back to the bottom to our form footer. And we're going to replace our regular button component with our submit button. Perfect. So let me go ahead and go to our network and let's make it really, really slow. We're gonna say 3G so we could see our spinner. So now if I click sign up, notice that we have our spinner. Because we didn't add any items, we could see that our validation works. Perfect. Nice, now that we know that our basic sign up form works, including our validation, our loading, we know that we're able to create our new users in Strapi. Before we go ahead and work on our sign in form, we're going to, in the next video, take a look how to set HTTP cookies in Next.js. This will allow us to use our HTTP only cookie to make sure that we are authenticated and create private routes that allow us to protect our routes via Next.js middleware, not to allow unauthorized users to access pages that they don't have access to. And this is something we're going to do in the next video. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, definitely ask them in the comments or come hang out with me Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST time at Strapi's Discord open office hours where we answer strappy questions or just hang out and talk about random things. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.